um, that has been given to us over time and up to now we have all in one vessel. <clears throat> all in one vessel the Bible tells us Ezekiel 4 uh, 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 sure, I'm sure I will get this um, I will get this program next time because um, it's just not behaving just not behaving today <clears throat> So my brothers and my sisters, this is, this has nothing to do with any person, anyone personally. It has to do with the, thus saith the Lord, and where we stand at this time. You know, our pioneers they made some sort of error with the cleansing of the sanctuary. They thought that God was going to come to earth. And they thought that the sanctuary, the earth was the sanctuary, and then Christ coming back to take his people out and to purify it of sin would be the would be what Daniel 8, 14 was talking about. And to 2,300 days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. So they made an error with that. But what did they do? They restudied, and of course, they put us on the map, those of us who accept the Adventist message, because they restudied and realized that it wasn't regarding the cleansing of the earth, the second coming of Christ, but that coming was regarding coming from coming into the most holy place of the sanctuary. All right? But that coming is not finished because the coming into the most holy as an extension to his church on earth. When by cleansing the books, going through the books and investigate the dead, he will then turn the page to the living. And therefore, when it starts with the living, it will begin in the church. And if we are not qualified to be in the books in heaven, we will not be qualified to be in the final group in the final Seventh-day Adventist movement that will finish the work. Let me repeat that for emphasis. If our names are not qualified to be in the books of heaven in this cleansing of the sanctuary, when it reaches the period of the living, that is the cleansing that we must tell the people is happening. That when it comes to that point, the Seventh-day Adventist Church will change and be called by a new name. And that is the time that this group from the Seventh-day Adventists, who will be Seventh-day Adventists, called by a new name, will finish the gospel work. And there will be no boundaries in terms of taking the message to all the world and bringing the people in a clean vessel. Prophets and Kings 7.25 says, read it for me. Prophets and Kings 7.25, I'll repeat it. Clad in the armor of, Christ of Christ's righteousness. The church is to go forth. The church is to go forth. To all the world. To all the world. Bear as the morning. 
Right, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners. Let's dissect that. The church of God is to go forth into all the world, fair as the moon, clear as the sun. When you hear the sun and the moon is introduced. In the word of God, the sun is symbolical of the written word and the moon is symbolical of the reflection of the word. So they, they are close. The church of God will go forth in all the world. You know, it is our final conflict of the church. The final conflict of the church, she will, as a collective body, not one here, one there, as a group, like 120, she will be clothed in the righteousness of God, fully armored. That time, the Church of God, the members of God's church will not die. <sighs> they will not die because the wheel will turn. You recall in <clears throat> Revelation chapter 8, we read about those who were under the altar. And they were crying out. They were crying out. And they were asking the question, How long? How long will the judgment give us revenge? Well, you know the revenge that they will get? The Bible said they should wait a little longer until your brethren are killed. So therefore, when Rome killed or massacred like all the, uh, the, the, the disciples and all the saints during that time, which is coming out really in the fifth seal that we are about to study, hopefully next week we'll get it up clearly. It is telling us that those were slaughtered mercilessly. We have in great controversy where it tells us of the Bartholomew massacre. After the Christian church, after they were all slain, it moved on to that period, they were all slain, brothers and sisters. I promise you this. The Bible tells us that in the last conflict of the church when she's clad in the own armor of Christ's righteousness. The sword, meaning the guns, will fall powerless as a straw. Men will seek death and cannot find it. In other words, they will face all the threat the threats of our time in the future when they are sealed but because they are sealed by God not to die from here from this time <clears throat> being alive they will not taste it and that's why we will have 144,000 living saints will also have a great multitude, living saints, that will not taste death. But they are symbolized by Elijah and Enoch. Two people were translated without tasting death, telling us that there will be two groups in our time, in the future. So God bless you. <clears throat> I... Um, Sometimes, you know, things happen, but we use the time wisely to highlight a few things. And um, 
If you have any question, please. You know we are here all the time. Um, all right. <clears throat> My question is that um, you mentioned Arico, um You know, as time go by, you see the same. Uh, You mute yourself, right? <clears throat> yeah, there was a call coming in. Um, I just declined the call. Anyhow, um, I, 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 as time go by, we recognize that um, a group of people maybe not um agree what their their um. For instance, no um, if 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 uh, if if members, I just giving an example. Like some time ago, I remember um in Latona Church, there uh, there was disagreement with the pastors and so forth. And what was going on here, they migrate and start a different um, uh, movement, in other words. That sometimes it doesn't fall under the conference. But at the same time, I heard you said, um, you know, hypocrites and other things creep up just the same. So at, at what point, at what point, um, well, the, you, you, you will still continue to see things like those happen. But um, in the movement, um, I, 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 I just you, you, as you go along there, you mentioned that um, a, 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 a group of people, true people, will form when will, 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 will we fail to continue with, uh, with the message and spreading the gospel. Uh, like a true, genuine group of people will rise and... Um, Continue with the, the, the word of God. In other words, what we fail to do, a true group of people, where where those people will come in from? Uh, the seven day Adventist church. But God, <coughs> it will come out of the separation that will take place. So the, the message today is that God will, God has taken his, the reins in his own hands and the separation that is going on among the dead, because right now there's a separation going on where those who will come, but only that they will be raised in first and second resurrection. When, when it comes to the living, uh, let me back up where your question is concerned. Um, people will separate from the church <coughs> and condemn the, the church as if and because I know groups that have left the church and encourage their members not to go because they are in the church you have sinners and and they will they will you know influence you negatively so it's best to stay out of that company that is totally false god in other words that is man trying to separate themselves um i mean if the church having if an issue with you and you can't worship there if they if they actually you know, decide that you can't worship there. Well, you still have to worship. There are other churches and, you know, you can... But that, what I'm saying, that is not the type of separation that God is talking about. <clears throat> Whatever the circumstance that cause you to separate, whether legitimate or you just fed up with the church, and go and some will say I'm not going back to church because you know too much things going on there that is not the type of separation with God is say is talking about the reason why I say that the reason why I say there are hypocrites there everywhere they they form a group the group that God will form out of the Seventh-day Adventist Church there will not be sinners or sin among them. That's why I say that they will do the last work. They, I mean, an example of that is the church that Peter, when Christ built and Peter was, was leading out in, when they could read minds, and they read the mind of us, um, 
Ananias and Sapphira. So it's not for us to separate from the church as it is now. It is for us to um, advocate the message regarding what God says about this sanctuary. Because that's our message. If we dig into that, we will, the Holy Spirit will bring to us the light of truth regarding this separation. Right? All right, all right. Um, and, um, that clearly understood because at that, um, at that time, the, 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 the message, um, the, the sanctuary that we're supposed to be uh, spreading, then at that time, genu genuinely, those, those people will focus on that uh, message. Yes, they'll focus. Nothing <clears throat> will hinder them. Nothing. And the three angel message will get, according to Revelation 18, power and force, the power of the Holy Spirit. And these people, and that is the time when the people will get the outpouring of the Spirit's power. And when they get that, just like the apostles are the 120, they, they will not die this time. The Bible tells that clearly. They will not die and there will, there's no way, no boundary, no government that can stop them. They will just move all over the world. And as a matter of fact, that is the time when the Sunday law also will be in effect. So you will see there will be a lot of restriction um, against Christians. But the, the Seventh-day Adventist, and why I'm stressing that is that it's the only people with that knowledge that will Mr. be able to um, that will be able to um, <clears throat> let me see if I can see this later. Yes, this is Hello, yes. Hi. Good night, how are you doing? Ah, oh, I made it um, fantastic. But I'm online with a program now. Yes. Oh, I'm Please. sorry. Uh, huh? I am going to look for you now before I All right. Okay, dear. Thanks. I know that. Stop in and listen to you. I don't know. I know that. All right. Take care. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yes, Brother Carl. Um, <clears throat> this, this. God is setting up his church to face the, uh, the image beast. The church right now, God labeled it as lukewarm, wretched, miserable, poor, blind. But he, inv he invites the church to buy of me gold tried in the fire. That is talking about is truth that you know that is pure is truth that cannot be uh, that cannot cannot be what cannot be bought in terms of cannot cannot be tainted. Yeah, with 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 false man, and we'll show we we'll, as we study. I'll show you where the Bible in Ezekiel four. It talks about the message of God being eaten, but it is baked on dung that comes out of a man, but substituted the dung that comes out of a cow. That's referring to Christians. 
and more and, and also seven day Adventist Israel, which is us, modern Israel. Why is saying that man as uh, input or contaminate his truth over a period of time, contaminate the doctrines. And not until we get that pure, unadulterated truth that uh, the work will be finished. And it starts right now within the church. He can't, he's not raising up another organization, so that doesn't count. It is within this church that he's introducing this truth. So that's how the work will be finished. And you can, I mean, I tell you this, the majority of the people in the church realize that something is wrong, but they can't put their hand on it. <laughs> I tell you, I realize something, as a matter of fact, that's why you see many people are drawing themselves away. And the leaders, they are not catching the vision to realize that they have to come off, to come back to God's drawing board and see what was laid out for Seventh-day Adventists. So everybody is preaching and trying to bring in souls and all that, and that's not going to work. Now, if we follow that method and come up with different programs, and uh, if, we, if they continue, I tell you, <coughs> the world will be in this state forever and ever and ever, because that method cannot finish the work. That's what the Bible said. That's what the spirit of prophecy said. They have to go back to the spirit of prophecy. They have to go back <coughs> to the to the golden bowl. <coughs> Last time I, I was um, giving a study on the, the Zechariah 4, which brings out the golden bowl. And <clears throat> it is a method that God has revealed to the church. And <clears throat> they don't pay it any mind. You might have seen this chart. I'm going to put it up. It's from Revelation 1.20. You have Revelation 1.20. Read Revelation 1, Finally, or this year for me. Revelation one twenty. Yeah. The mystery of this. No, rev the, the back to chapter three. There, where it's Laodicea, the seven church. Yeah, you have it, Carl. Uh, yeah, it's a Revelation one verse twenty. Yes. It said, "The mystery of the seven stars, which thou sawest." in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks with those eyes are the seven churches okay <clears throat> tell me if you can see this chart good um yeah uh on this chart, you have the seven churches of Asia. You can see the picture. This is Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, 
and Laodicea. Oh, if you go through Revelation 2 and 3, you will see where the Christ was addressing the angels of the churches. Now the churches are represented by the candlesticks. Church, God's church is always represented by a candlestick with seven lamps. And the seven lamps meaning that in the period of this church, all the churches in the world that is represented it, it is, is represented through that. In other words, he's talking about, he's not talking about one church like Belvedere. He's talking about all the seven Adventist churches worldwide, right? That's why seven. Seven means complete. So in every period, even though you have the main church, you have others. Okay. So he address them and tell them their position. But he didn't address the candlestick. These are some things that we have to understand that God put some symbols and every one of the symbols, unless they are understood, we don't get the lesson. Now he's addressing the angel of the church right so I told Ephesus what he think about him he told um, Smyrna and all of them ah he said that the mystery about this is that these candlesticks are the churches but the stars are represent the angel of the church. So God is addressing the ministry, mm -hmm. the people who are caretaker of his church. Right. Uh, now, when he addresses Laodicea, he's addressing the ministry, the pastors, all the leadership because unless they adhere to his bidding the church light will not shine all right in other words it will either flicker or dim so when we look we saw that revel um <coughs> laodicea <coughs> Well, first of all, why do we say it is the Seventh-day Adventist Church? Many will tell you that it represents the period, the last period. <coughs> but <coughs> the last period has a church that God speaks through. Huh. They wouldn't there are no Adventist um, leadership would acknowledge if you would if you were to tell them that God is speaking to the Catholic Church. Would they agree with you? Yeah. If God is speaking, is bringing the truth through the Catholic church would they agree with you uh, uh, well uh, i don't think so because um no one like to hear when things not going their way no one like to hear when things not going their way so they would acknowledge that this is a church with the prophecy this is a church with the church. this is a church that is representing and you hear it from time to time feeble and defective <coughs> though the church is it's on whom God has um, bestowed a supreme regard so we know that it is representing the period 
And this seven means it is all God's churches with the truth in this period. All. All right. Now, <clears throat> why would he address, if he were addressing, he's making sure that we know what he's saying. He's making sure to tell us that he's addressing not the congregation, so to speak, but he's addressing the angel. The reason why we know is the ministry is that this couldn't be a heavenly angel. Why couldn't it be a, a, this person? Why couldn't the angel of the church be a heavenly angel? Because of the record. The record against this angel could not be somebody in heaven. And since this angel is the caretaker. That's why it must be the ministry. Now let us read again, refresh the Laodicean record. Go ahead. Revelation 3, reading from verse 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things that the Amen, the faithful and true witness. The beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayst be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayst be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eye with alsav, that thou mayst see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Mm -hmm. No. <clears throat> Thus quickly, in Zechariah, and let's let me say this, God uses a candlestick to represent his church, which is with seven lamps, one candlestick with seven lamps. And it's always showing that his church is equipped to give complete light in every dispensation. All right? Every dispensation, his church is equipped with the light of truth. Now in Zechariah 4 it shows us um, a candlestick and the means of giving the light is let's Let's look at these. The means of giving light is to receive oil from the trees. These trees, according to um, I don't know what's, who is on my computer? I think somebody is acting in my hack. hack my computer because I don't know why it is. But anyway, in great controversy, um, 200, uh, 
and 60. Let me find it. It tells us that the, the candlesticks represent the Old and New Testament. All right? The Old and the New Testament. So this is the Word of God. Ha! Huh. Are you, you have your Bible? Yeah. All right, we're gonna wrap it up now. But I just want to give you an introduction to this. The Old and the New Testament. <coughs> um, I'm going to read to you quickly. I think 296, they're about in the great controversy. I have it on my computer there, but it is a mess. <coughs> it tells us that it says here, These are the two witnesses, the two witnesses that prophesied throughout the, the dark ages in sackcloth. <laughs> right? That's what it tells us. And when we, um, and it also tells us that these two witnesses are the Old and the New Testament. Now, if this, if this is the Old and New Testament, it is also telling us that the Bible would have been The Bible was, was completed, and that would have been in the New Testament period. So in every, all of these prophecies, it puts us, it gives us a time factor. All right? It gives us a time as to when the prophet, what time the prophecy is talking about. Here on the computer, you can read that in Great Country 267, I will say too. Concerning the two witnesses, the prophet declares. Further, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks, two candlesticks in this case. Uh, Zechariah tells us in Zechariah for about one, but there were two because, and that is because in that time, during the Dark Ages, the Old Testament was written and the New Testament was written. So the Bible, the, <coughs> the Word of God is trying to place us where we're, what period of time we're talking about. But anyway, not to get in too deep in this, it says, if you have the book or you can pull it up, here's it on the computer, that the candlestick standing before the God of the earth, thy word, said the psalmist, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path, Revelation 11.4 and Psalm 119.104. 
And here it says the two witnesses represent the scriptures of the Old and New Testament. So we have that, right? If these are the Old and New Testament, and we are just getting the revelation, God has shown us in Zechariah 4 that there are two pipes. These are all spiritual, symbolical. There are two pipes that are extracting the oil and putting it in a golden bulb. Ah. Oh. These two pipes are extracting the oil. It's not literal oil. Oil is revealed truth. Oil is the word of God. But in order for the church that will finish the work, because this is a final stage, it, the ministers, is showing us clearly in our time, Seven, the, the, what we read in Revelation shows seven angels, but this is another form in another um, response from Zechariah. He puts it in pipes, and he's showing that the pipes are feeding what is coming from the Bible, they are feeding it to the light, but they are feeding it from the golden bowl. Now the only thing that this can represent is the prophets who interpret the Bible. God says, surely in, in um, Amos 3.7, surely the Lord will do nothing and reveal a secret to his servant, the prophet. So while we can read the Bible and understand things and do line upon line, that's not all about what the Bible is saying. The Bible has deep secret that is, for example, the book of Daniel, or the books of Daniel, which are open in our time and are being revealed, it must mean something to us, and we have to follow the method of God. The prophet interpreted, they put it in what we call the spirit of prophecy. The Seventh-day Adventist Church is gifted with the spirit of prophecy. If the spirit of prophecy is not used, all we will be getting is private interpretation of men, because you don't see God sticking the, these tubes in the tree. Do we see that? No, they are not sticking in themselves in the tree. God shows us that the spirit of prophecy are interpreted word, the oil. That's the method in the time when the Bible is fully blazing. If, because the Bible started to be written in the Old Testament, just bef in the in the Old Testament church, when Israel were called, Moses is the one that started the written word. What God is showing us that in the time when the Bible is in the form of the Old and New Testament, he has a method, a method, and that's why you can connect the dots. He has given this message and given and raised up the Seventh-day Adventist church on the spirit of prophecy and prophecy. So can we can we reject the spirit of prophecy? And isn't this showing that it would be the main source of Bible truth other than I mean those secret things other than what we can read and get encouragement and get you know counsel. It is saying that this, if we're, if we're built on prophecy, then we have to do what the Bible says and get the revelation or the interpretation of the prophecy from 
the goal and goal. So what is showing that this is not in place right now. It's not in place. But it will be the last church that will finish the gospel. We know it is not in place because <coughs> there's a history between the Christian church that God raised up that it was paganized and it was fallen but then the protestant period the truth started to come back and then this truth the word of God start putting that in what is referring Zechariah to a golden bowl everywhere you turn you see the gift to seventh day Adventist and at the same time, you see the uh, the sad state of affair regarding refusing or rejecting the gift of God that we have been given. Now, these are some of the truth that, you know, we have to come back to the drawing board and the people have to be taught what is the status of the church. You must teach that. So the only option for pastor now is to join the layman movement. Because if they have forfeited their position, they have forfeited that then there is no other recourse than to fall in line with the layman message that is within the church and get on board with that because that's the only way the church the, 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 the message the gospel work will be finished That's the only way gospel work will be finished. So we trust them, pray, my brother, that you just dig in. Um, and if you, when you're hungry and thirsting for truth, God will, God will open the way for truth. And I say the same to those online watching or listening. If you're hungry and thirsting for truth, it is within the Seventh-day Adventist. Or you don't usually hear it from the pulpit. Because you may hear a little from the pulpit, but they reach a point where they are holding back. They are holding back. And as a result, Satan is just flooding the church. God has a plan. He's going to purify the church. In one sense, he said that the earth is going to open up and swallow the flood of Satan. In one sense, it says in Ezekiel, they are going to seal those who sigh and cry. If God said we have to cry, you can't keep quiet. <laughs> and the reason why we keep quiet is that everything... There's nothing wrong with there's nothing wrong with everything that that we are doing. And somebody says, if nothing wrong with everything that is happening, then it means that we are dead and the dead knows nothing. <laughs> and we can't be living dead right now. We have to we have to start inquiring. And see what God has for his church. Because this, there's no stopping with this. With this church. This is the last. And it will, it will uh, finish the work. Alright, so. Any other closing thought? I'll give you the last word, my brother. Alright, that's enough. Yeah. The sun that you know, that that we be here on night, and it it was a privilege to be on. Mm -hmm. So 
looking forward again. All right. All right, God bless you. We are going to just sing a closing song. <coughs> Finish up. Mom, you're coming. I grab my guitar here. <coughs> That's close. I'm going grab my guitar and sing my song. <coughs> Oh, where the angels 
Jordan's swelling tide You behold the union devil Into which your train will glide There you'll be the superintendent God the Father God the Son With the heart in joyous plaudits yeah, Weary pilgrim Welcome home of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, to the love of God the Father, the full fellowship and the communion of the Holy Spirit, the comfort and rest remain and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. See you, Brother Carl. And yes, Brother God Carl. God bless your family. Mm -hmm. God bless everyone. Oh. Yeah. <clears throat> uh.